Hey guys, this is Locke. Check out this battle. Two things are happening in this battle. The first thing I want you to pay attention to is that in, in this battle, the boss is only going to be attacking my tank. He's never going to land a hit on anyone else with this positioning. So I think that's really cool because usually the AoE hits other people, but with this exact targeting, the boss is only going to be attacking my tank. And the other person that's getting damaged is whoever has the lowest HP, one of the Wisps will be attacking that person. So that's the first thing I want you to pay attention. The second thing I want you to pay attention to is I figured out a way that whenever the boss is casting the ultimate, uh, I will always have uh, the attack penalty debuff on this boss. So I figured out a way to be able to get that going 100% of the time. As you can see, whenever he's going to be casting his ultimate, that debuff is going to be there. So how I got to the spot, I want you to pay attention to a couple of things. So notice that the boss only has two skills. The first skill is cast on the sixth second, and the second skill is cast on the twelfth second. So basically, in the entire uh, timeline of this fight, the boss is going to be using the exact same moves every 12 seconds. So keep that number in mind, and I'm going to go through a few things. So since I know the time cycle, the cycle of the boss's skills is every 12 seconds, if I can figure out a way to cast, uh, you know, some skill within a 12 second interval, I know for sure I'll be getting my skill to cast at the exact same time as the boss's cast skills. Now, I remember that most of the heroes in the game, their battle skills are on a 12 second cooldown, uh, especially before you level up their skill level. So all of a sudden, I can definitely get, um, you know, I, I can definitely get the boss's skill cycle to align with my character's battle cycle. So what I ended up doing, I went to the gallery. This is how you actually look for heroes, by the way. I went to the gallery. I went to attack penalty, and I went through all of these heroes to try to find uh, heroes. Wait, is this the correct one? Oh, that's accuracy, attack penalty. This is the one I want to want to find. I went through all of these heroes to see if any heroes have uh, the attack penalty on their uh, battle skill, and it has to align with the 12 second cooldown. So I found a few options that would work. One of them is Gardas, which is the unit that I'm using. As you can see, uh, before you get level five of the skill, the complete recharge time is 12 seconds. Uh, and there's other there are other units that work as well. The other one that I found, which is an epic, is this guy. I don't know how to say his name. Wiuk, I think. But as you can see, he also has a attack penalty debuff that's on a 12 second, as long as you don't level up the skill to level five. You have to level up to level four so that you get a 100% chance to cast this. But other than that, uh, make sure you do not level to level five. If you do, I mean, you're out of luck because you can't unlevel them. Um, Unfortunately, I did not find any rares that this trick would work for. Um, I did find a few um, legendaries that it does work for, uh, but you know, legendaries are really hard to get. But if you happen to have him, this one, you know, this works. This guy, I don't know how to say his name. I'm not going to attempt it. Attempt it. And this guy also works. He also has the skill on the 12 second cooldown. If you happen to have Tamar, this is really interesting because uh, if you level up her skill to level four, then you get it on a 12 second cooldown. So with her, she's the only one where the battle skill works if you level it up. But the other options that I talked about, you actually need their battle skill to not be leveled up to the max level. So for me, I'll, I'll show you my Gardas in a second. Uh, I have only leveled it up to level four, not level five, because I don't want the extra two seconds off. So that way I can align uh, my skill cycle with the boss's skill cycle. So assuming that, you know, the level five is not, I, I didn't get the level five of the skill. So the initial recharge time will be seven seconds. And after the seven second, I will get coverage from seventh second to 12 seconds. And then that will basically be repeating every, every 12 seconds. So every cycle from the seventh second to the 12th second, I will have coverage. Now, uh, I actually tried this out a few times and I noticed that it seems like whenever he casts the skill, there is a little bit of a delay. So it's uh, when I'm casting the skill, it's actually a little bit more than 12 seconds. Now I tried a few different things. I tried to level up the skill haste, which would make him cast a little bit faster, but I never got it to match up. However, this skill uh, gives me a recharging speed penalty for five seconds. And when I apply this like together, uh, 
this skill and the attack penalty together i'm always able to get this attack penalty to be on when the boss is trying to uh cast his his alt so uh, in my in a previous video i talked about why attack penalty is so important it's because it cuts the boss's damage exactly by a half uh, well, for attack penalty 2, if you have attack penalty 1, it only cuts the boss damage by 25%. So you really want to have attack penalty 2, and if you are able to get, you know, this kind of setup, if you're able to get, you know, Gardas or any of the other heroes I talked about, unfortunately, again, as I mentioned, it's only epic and legendary heroes that it works for, but if you happen to have the setup, it makes this dungeon so much easier. Because, well, first of all, in this dungeon, the boss only does two skills. He does an AoE attack, and he does a single target attack. Uh, so the single target attack is the most devastating move where it does so much more damage. If you're able to get that cut in half, the damage that it cuts in half, you only really have to worry about the uh, AOE attack. And I showed you the you know the positioning I'm using. You can also copy it, I'll show you again. If you're using this position, your tank will be taking that AOE hit by himself. And uh, your tank will also be taking a weakened version of the boss's ultimate. So all of your healers, the whole team you have, everyone is supporting your tank. They're all healing him. So there are other units, um, like like her, uh, where she has a skill like this, like heal the ally with the lowest HP and uh, also granted defense up. So all of these kind of skills, all these single target skills that uh, you're supporting units have will all go towards healing your your tank now i am using um, an ultimate tank where is my tank i am using him as a tank uh, but it would really work for anyone else like if you want like you can take a look at the equipment i'm using it's nothing too crazy um i have not leveled up a epic tank or a rare tank so i have to use him because i don't have the resources to go up go and level up a an epic tank right now to show you this but it should work it should work with with horus because i mean the skills are quite similar um horus also has a shield i believe yep he also has he has a shield which has 10 percent of max hp um where and oops and this guy has a shield on his ultimate which grants 450 percent of defense shield uh, and damage reduction as well. So maybe he's a little bit better, but I think that, um, you know, the stats that I have on the right, if I sum them up, I'm, I have basically 68,000 HP and 23,000, sorry, not 23,000, that would be great, 2,300 defense. Um, the other stats are, are not needed. I don't really need accuracy on this guy because although he has the same thing, the attack penalty uh, debuff on him, I'm not using it from him at all. My attack penalty debuff is coming from this guy who has 196 accuracy i put all of my accuracy stuff into him this is the layout that i have and since he's only level 50 i had to give him like you know much better items like i had to give him this <laughs> uh, like the legendary gears that i had i have been farming this for a while that's why i have so many gears now but i found that the setup works and um I, I thought I would share it with you. So anyway, this this is the setup I'm having. I don't really need too much HP or defense or even levels on this guy. Probably level 70 would work for most um, if you're using him in a similar way that I'm using him. Um, and uh, what was I saying? Yes, so th the most important thing that you have to make sure, this guy is probably going to be your lowest HP person on your team. So because of that, you just have to make sure that he's able to survive the attacks from the Wisp because the Wisps targets whoever has the lowest HP. So as long as he's able to survive that, uh, then there's no problem. Nobody else on your team is gonna be taking any damage at all. Uh, and I'll show you how you can position your team to kind of still be able to go through this challenge. So this is what you want to be able to, this is what you want to do. So you want to make sure that this guy is standing either over here or here, one of these two positions, will, actually no, he has to stay here. The reason he has to stay here is because staying here will be able to, will make him be able to target the boss as its attack. As you can see, he uh, there you go. You can see that the purple he is attacking the boss, so he's going to be targeting the boss and applying the defense, uh, sorry, the attack penalty on him, and he's also going to be using the recharge speed down uh, debuff on him as well. Um, other than that, uh, if I have an AOE attack unit i'm going to put it over here or here 
Uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because, uh, first of all, they're going to be attacking the Wisps to, be to begin with, with their normal attack. But when they do an AoE attack, uh, they will still target the Harpy. If I have a single target attacker, I want to put the single target attacker here to make sure that I'm, again, targeting the Harpy. Um, and yeah, with this positioning, he will move up and everyone else will be out of the range of the boss to clump them together. So the, in that case, the boss will only target whoever is closest to him. Um, I'm going to be using this uh, food to give a little bit more HP to make sure you know my, my tank is able to survive and, and handle the hits from the boss. But that's it. This is the setup and, and it's working quite well. Um, so, you know, I mean, uh, unfortunately, not everyone's going to be able to replicate this exactly, especially if we don't have Gardas or any of the other units I talked about. Um, there are different strategies that you can apply, but I wanted to bring this up because I thought this was really cool. And even if you don't have these units, you can still kind of at least use this placement to make sure that only... Um, only your tank is taking damage so you can kind of you don't have to invest so much uh, resources in bringing up the defense and health of all the other units uh, because you know this boss can hit very hard with this AOV and uh, if he's targeting two of your backline units they will probably have not an easy time surviving if you are using not Gardas but one of the other units that I talked about and you want to figure out you have to kind of tweak it a little bit to make this work um, like I said, for me, uh, for Gardas, he has that uh, recharge speed down, which is kind of, you know, you, you can see, like, you, if, if you have this and you're able to replicate it, you will be able to see that uh, whenever the boss is casting the ultimate, he will have this attack debuff, attack penalty debuff on him. Um, if you're using somebody else, like I think it's Vyuk, the poison unit that I talked about, um, in that case, you have to... Um, maybe you have to put some attacks uh sorry the skill haste on him uh to get it to work uh you probably have to play around with it because i, I tried with 20 skill haste and for 40 skill haste and it didn't work so you might have to be able to get you know a number between 20 and 40 like 30 or 32 or something and you probably have to go to the uh the fourth slot awakening to be able to get that but anyway um yeah, it will It will depend. You'll have to do a little bit of tweaking to figure out that. For Gardas, this works really well just because of his kit and that he's able to basically apply it all by himself and get this to work. So anyway, that's it for this video. Um, I wanted to get this out uh, and I wanted to get it out as fast as I could, to be honest, so that if somebody does have him and they accidentally skill him up or any of the other units I talked about, if you accidentally skill, it, skill them up, you can't go back. So hopefully you guys haven't done that yet i mean otherwise they aren't that good of a unit anyway so hopefully you're saving your uh skill scrolls and you are able to take advantage of this you do want to level up the skill to make sure you have a hundred percent chance of landing the debuff but you do not do not want to level up the skill to the last level because the last level is where it gives you the recharge time down i hope i can make that very clear um there are some other units that this kind of works for, um, but uh, you know they come with some, sadly, some disadvantages, which which really it sucks. Uh, let me just—I mean, you can see, like you know, whenever like this is going to work out. So I'm just going to stop this and talk about the other heroes that sadly don't make the pass. But if you can get them to work somehow, I mean, that's that's awesome, right? So the first hero, uh, let's go back to the gallery. and put the attack penalty. So the first hero that this works out for, uh, that actually it, it doesn't work out for, for this reason, is Horus. Now Horus has this skill on a 12 second cooldown as well. Unfortunately, he only has a 75% chance of inflicting attack penalty. There's no way to increase that to go to 100%. So that's the only reason it doesn't work out. If this worked out, like if that, if that was fixed, this would have been perfect because everybody has Horus, right? And um, you have a tank and this attack penalty debuff for N1. So it's too bad that there's no way to increase that 75% to 100% because if it was possible, that would be perfect. Um, somebody else that uh, is able to do this is, I think it was, was it her? 
oh, I, I remember who it was. It was this light. It was her, Nessa. She also has the attack penalty debuff on a 12 second timer but with her you have to level it up because you can see uh, she starts at 14 seconds and when you level it up to level 5 it goes down to 12. I, I don't know why that is but that's just how it is. So you have to unfortunately spend some epic skill scrolls on her to get her to uh, level 5. Um, however she is a melee unit so she will have to you know if you have a tank she will go and stand next to the tank and she will be getting hit with the AoE ability with the AoE attacks. So that's not ideal because she doesn't have you know too much HP to survive this. Um, so you know that that sucks. And she also has her passive reduces the enemy's ultimate energy by fifteen percent whenever she's attacking. Uh, you know, whenever she's attacking with skills and the enemy has debuffs. So um, she might actually reduce the ultimate gauge by way too much that you know it misaligns uh you, you know you, your 12 second counter misaligns with the bosses because you keep taking too much energy from him like too much ultimate gauge from him so I, that's the uh, i think because of that it's it's going to be a little bit too hard to use here um i think shook was one was shook one no she is not he has it on this skill yeah, so uh, th those are that's what I found. I, I wanted to share this video, and um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments or something isn't really clear, uh, le leave it in the comments, and I'll do my best to explain it to you. Anyway, that's it for now. Take care, guys.